Jean Lai Jade is always refining the products that make Cantha a more accessible, advanced nation. With creative and thoughtful design, the same technology used in Jade Max can almost fit in the palm of your hand. Say hello to your new adventuring companion. We all have different needs, so you can customize your Jade Bot with a module. Let them speed up your skiff, energize your mount, recycle items, scavenge for you, and more. Equip it with a robust power core and your bot can even enhance your vitality. Your Jade Bot will always be there to give you a boost, save you time, and pick you up when you're down. It's great company when you just want to take in the view. Make a little room in your heart for Jade Bots. They'll be available to unlock and customize soon. Hello everyone, welcome to the Lightbringers podcast, but this is not the podcast, this is the guild chat watch along reaction slash do your thing and dance around a small caterpillar. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Happy Friday. But that's Ruby and we are, for the meantime, going to be just watching this video because we're waiting for one of our guests to come along as well so we can add their camera so we're not all over the place, but there is myself. There is Kruf, and there is one sassy cat here in the moment, and then Rook Hello. will be coming as well. Ooh, needs work. What, my intro? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Kruf, say hello. Hello. One sassy cat, say hello if you want. Hi. Yay. <laughs> so we're going to watch the uh, live stream or not. They're talking about... I also have been watching all of your questions. And oh, Jade Bot. Okay, I thought she was going to say something else. But we're talking about the Jade Bot today. It's going to be exciting. The trailer was awesome that we just saw. And I'm hoping they're just going to show us a ton of footage. I have no idea what they're going to show us. With me today are our two Who have they actually got with them as well? Uh, let's start with Indigo. Hey, hi. Hi, I'm Indigo. Oh, Indigo is there again. What, they're doing the lore again, I guess? I don't know. Maybe. You gotta have lore for a jade bot. Jade babies, actually. This is what she just said. I think you'll find. What? What? Everyone, uh, I'm a design manager here at ArenaNet. I was part oh, of yeah. the on jade bots. Nice, Ben's on. All right, thank That's you for sweet. being here, and thanks to all of you for hanging out with us. Let's get started with what exactly Jade Bots are. Indigo, why don't you kick us off from the lore side of this? Yeah, absolutely. So as kind of a high overview for our new viewers too, I'll, I'll not only go about bots, but Jade technology as a whole in Cantha. So where we're standing right now, where Ruby and I are in the game, are the, the first guarded of Enlightened Thought, which is the, one of the most uppermost layers of New Kynang City, which might sound a little ritzy, and it is. Uh, this is a trade <laughs> show slash tech demo for Jinlai Jade. This area is one of our renowned hearts, which are activities that the player can do to learn different mechanics. And we'll chat about that a little bit more in a bit, but this one specifically focuses on Jade Bots. A quick high overview of Canthan Tech and Jade Botch before Ben dives in. Um, as we've been teasing a pinch, and as some of you might have it noticed, looks so kind of pretty. Stream last week, the Empire is filled to the brim with Jade technology. It does. Jinlai Jade is a tech mogul of the world, Damn. and it's going to be introducing a lot of really cool new things to Tyria. Um, all of this tech is powered by a resource called Dragon Jade, which is magically infused jade left over from an event called the Jade Wind and Guild Wars Factions, which happened when Shiro Tagachi was killed, and he basically Ooh, petrified Those umbrellas everything. are pretty cool. Yes. Good lord, um, how really dare you! Event. Definitely <laughs> recommend <laughs> A bit so more long ago. Dragons. But um, Dragon Jade powers just about everything you see in Cantha and New Kynang. There are color projectors, everything. news, zip lines. We're going to go play now, wink, wink, wink. We'll talk about those in a second. Giant yeah. whale holograms that Ruby, Connor, and I screamed about last week, and a bunch of other super necessary. <laughs> oh, look at the bot there. It's just sitting there. I didn't even notice that. To help oh my God. kind of streamline the day to day in, in Cantha. So but speaking about the day to day, Jade bots, they're great, they're cute, they're my favorite thing in the world, they're just adorable, <laughs> but um, most importantly, they do aid the day-to-day -day of the Canthans. Um, now, as posed in Kainang, Jade Tech can be extremely expensive, though getting your own bot is not, it's tied to story, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, 
But for the people of camp, that can be a pretty hard technology to That's maintain, and it's often found yeah. That's okay, you're totally fine. You're totally fine. The richer districts well, I, I'll just you type travel them. up in Hainang, <laughs> you'll see them in Aquavald, you'll see a couple in, in yeah, we can hear you. and Shenzhen as well. Um, but they're used for all sorts of things. They're they're namely used for public transportation. They're kind of the key uh -huh, to the zip lines yes, and teleporters. Um, they're oh, used for security purposes, too. Um, some of our super astute observers may be... We're not right, right now, but just letting you know. The bird race in Camp That. Um, that they were using jade bots to kind of help um, identify some jade brotherhood threats that were lingering in the area, and that's a part of Nowen Heart. So there's a bunch of different uses, but I know players are really excited to learn about what all these things can do. So I'll pass it over to Ben, and we can just start digging into them a little bit. Yeah, uh, there's kind of three different big parts to jade bots. There's the in-world interactions that people can do uh, around Cantha. Uh, Stuff like jade batteries, uh, turrets, and so forth. Um, there's the skills you get and the abilities you get from the mastery track. And then the, the big part for me okay. is the actual Everyone equipment can slots that Jadebot has. Just so you uh, know. Power cores, mods, and <laughs> oh, wow. module slots. Awesome. So back okay, to what so I was saying about jump into all yeah. of those. <laughs> How do you, I want to touch on first how you but get started. How do you unlock this thing in the first place? And Indigo, this is a story step, right? Yeah, absolutely. So when you, you start on the end of Dragon's story, eventually you will get to a pretty early on story step where you will get your own bot. One of our characters is going to lend one to you. No spoilers, and you're going to get to keep it. I feel like <laughs> you're going to get lent a bot, so but you, you just keep it. And it all just yeah. kind of unfolds from there. And Permanent loan. We'll talk about yeah. Screw those library books. I'm keeping it. Interactions that you'll have with the Jade bot, but they're super useful in so many different ways. Okay. All right, so as we get ready to <laughs> Ruby, go just like, all okay. of these details that Ben mentioned, <laughs> um, Ben, where thing. is this, just to get that first question yeah. out of the way, where are Jade Bots, where can you use your Jade Bots? So most of the functions are all available uh, in open worlds. Uh, some of them are also functional in other areas, but it's on a kind of case by case basis. Some of the things obviously wouldn't work. Uh, we wouldn't want to work in PvP and World versus World, for example. And a, a few of the I things mean... we wouldn't really want to work in, uh, like strikes, raids, and fractals either. Mm -hmm. uh, but open worlds, uh, pretty much everything is functional. That's good though, because that's been one of the major concerns I've heard. That like, okay, you know, you can we'll use it in raids or stuff like that as we go. Yeah, no, that's so good. So let's start right over here with the first part, which is direct control. I'm going to come over to this Jadebot terminal. And is this the camera we'll... mode? Talk about what his what I'm doing. Yeah, because this is people are excited <laughs> about this, and I'm like, hmm. yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> go, go ahead, Ben. <laughs> yeah, people. I was, I'm uh, new okay. here. I I'll am sorry. I'm yeah. yeah. many. But it's okay. We're all just so super excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we have a few specific areas set up I'm around so the cute. world uh, for you to the take. Cutest drone ever. Bot. It's the cutest <laughs> little baby. Look at its because little helicopter, it's baby. Kind of some new tech, and we were. <laughs> We were a little conservative with it. So oh, wow. Okay. A few story instances where you can take direct control and then a few areas uh, in the open world where you can take direct control. Um, but uh, then your J-Bot can fly around and do a bunch of stuff like interact with these lanterns and stuff like that or uh, take cool screenshots. Yeah, this is this is awesome for open world screenshots just for getting like those beauty shots of the world. And I'm, uh, I'm going to be a little bit careful. And of your character. Far. Uh, ben, I will let you talk about this. It is no, Ruby, limited. keep going up. Completely traverse Cantha from a single terminal. Yeah, we have a few boundaries in place to make sure you can't uh, fly absolutely anywhere uh, at this time. Uh, there we go. Just because I hope they like so expand this at some point, though, so that, that we don't want people to you would have like a radius a around your character, you, one, you know, so that you area, could use it freely as a screenshot tool, no matter where you were in the world. And I did oh. just light up this Jade Lantern. Um, nice. This is now Indigo. You talked about this with me earlier. This is kind of a training area, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we set up this renowned heart as it's a, it's actually one of my favorite renowned hearts because you're not really fighting. Well, there is fighting oh. in it, possibly, <laughs> but. Um, most importantly, it really just kind of helps you get into the motions of picking up jade batteries, using them to light the lanterns. There's some zip lines in the area. A lot of the NPCs give you some some mm. cute little info on the jade bots. We, I, when I was writing this event, I kind of wrote them all like Apple Genius Bar workers, so they're all super enthusiastic and want to tell you about jade bots all the time. They're they're salespeople. They're they're doing their job. But yeah, there's um a bunch of different activities. Yeah, OB, yeah, bot, exactly. Um, 
if you're not them. interested in that, it's there's not. also just kind of another Jade Tech homage. There's some training panels too where you can fight some of the Jade mechs, which, by the way, yeah, are I'm wondering some of if you can like go into first person, friendly, like and like look through the you, eyes of the bot kind of thing, so that you yeah. could actually yeah, you. take like but screenshots <laughs> of your character with it. Or it's like, you know, scary. capture footage one, of like, the landscape or whatever you want to do. If they haven't like, got that for launch, that would be silly. <laughs> as soon as they've got <laughs> the text, so you can do first person yeah, in the this, game this anyway. Area is, it's and really, it's, it's literally PvP camera. <laughs> like, it's, they've already got the best should be. I haven't said it though. So lots of exciting stuff. All right, so where are direct control terminals located? Where can, where can players do this? This is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so the this, um, is, uh, this thing is the sector, right. um, actually, Ben, do you want to what? talk about this? Yeah, uh, there's a couple uh, hearts like this one, um, and then there's a couple uh, areas in the the personal story that you can interact with, and then there's one that I don't really want to talk about too much because it's a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, I'm a little bit surprised uh, okay. about it. You summon a dragon. Yeah, pretty limited right now. It looks now. like people we are saying in the chat letter, that yes, you can do spell. first person in it. Yes, yes, yes. And Indigo, you okay. were going to say? Oh, I was just going to say it's um one of my favorite things about these locations, even though right now it's it's quite limited using these panels in the drone areas. In, yeah, because in you're this really area like, you are kind of limited, you know, when you take screenshots. Like, even like, you know, when you want to hit that to mark to like between like the furthest really zoomed into your character yeah. before and it goes into first person and then out, and then you've got too much space around their heads. Okay. I.e. trying to get thumbnails well, for fucking I'm, I'm YouTube like videos. Wow, I just swore already. I think that's because it's frustrating. But yeah, awesome. Yeah, when All you get five masteries, so uh, the first one you get is the glide booster that everybody's kind of seen on a lot of the promotional material. Uh, at uh, at its basic level, it just gives a real quick boost, uh, straight up like what you're about to do right now. Okay. That's cool. Well, you cool. actually yeah. have the enhanced version, but I so nor we'll by default there. they don't they don't go quite that high uh, by default. But uh, it's just a fun way to get a little extra distance out of your glide, and if you're really good with the timing, like. I've kind of practiced a little bit of uh, going on the mount, gliding, boosting up, and getting back on the mount to get, get that little extra altitude is kind of fun. All right. You can super take advantage of that then. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right. Let's look at okay. So that's the first one you get, and then the next one. So multi-charge doesn't give you an actual skill. This allows you to carry more jade energy charges, and kind of what those are is... Uh, your jade bot can store energy for interacting with objects in the world uh, like the the turrets and uh, the jade tech teleporters and the boon consoles a lot of the stuff actually requires energy so your your jade bot can gather that and then I just love it every single other, animation uh, it has it's so cute. it goes over the little and then just picking <laughs> up just some charges there. Where does he go though? And so what this mastery does is so it gives you an extra like permanent self or something. Or? Uh, Must be. I like that it's not always around you because that'd just be annoying. So, yeah, I was worried about that like, too. Get you into combat every like two seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Let's go to the JTEC waypoint. Yeah, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, JTEC waypoint. This is, we talked about this as well. Uh, so we did. Like really Several of our puzzles, sort of guesses on really this yeah. showed up, which I was excited uh, about. The one thing oh, is yeah. We are secretly developers. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, go the potential of being able to use it in jump <laughs> puzzles. I had not even thought, but here I am now thinking. Ooh, the map. Not super long, but you to like, use it to like spawn rush. What was that on the right of the map? Over and over and over. Yeah, because it, <laughs> it behaves pretty much like any other waypoint where you, if you're downed and you wait and use it, it'll it'll bring you back. Uh, but we don't want people to be able to obviously do that over and over again on a boss, on a boss encounter. Yeah, mm -hmm. that absolutely um, makes sense. Yeah, and like I said, uh, only available in open world, no PvP world versus world story instances, uh, anything like that where you could potentially break things pretty badly. <laughs> Um, actually, you know what, I do want to just back up because there is something that I am sure people have questions about. When we were talking about multi-charge and charging up your Jade bot, you, and Ben, you can confirm this for me, you will always have a battery, a way to charge available in the map where it is needed, correct? You're not going to have yeah, to like, yeah. travel halfway across mm, the world okay. to get a new charge. 
No, they shouldn't be too far. Uh, we made the charges pretty plentiful. Um, the one thing is the the Jade Bot charges won't stick with you on map movement. Uh, this is for a couple different reasons I won't go into here, but uh, anywhere where you'll need one, you should be able <laughs> to find one. Uh, sometimes they're specifically limited. A lot of story instances might specifically limit the number of charges in the map uh, for puzzle reasons. Uh, but yeah, uh, anywhere in the Canton maps, you should be able to readily get charges. All right, that works. Okay, sorry for interrupting, but I did want to cover that. But question. yeah, only Canton maps. Sure. So telling all of you, you probably would have to go back can. if you were elsewhere and you were using their functionalities. So that makes sense though, because of the jade Let's and stuff, right? So, uh, that makes sense. That's energy okay. efficiency lets your jade it would be nice from batteries. if you could get, get a battery hub for like your guild hall cool or something like that, and then you could just go or like your home instance. Well, maybe that's a thing. Maybe that's a thing. I'll write that down on the document. Yeah, that mastery, your jade bot watching gather charges while you zip. Um, this seems like a good place to talk a little bit about transportation in campus since we're on the zip lines. Heck yeah, so there are the, the zip lines <laughs> and teleports all throughout campus that kind of help better society oh navigate the problem the guys which amazing. is especially pertinent mm. in New Kainang. Because the citizens, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that Mount license for normal Canton citizens are really expensive, so they need a way to be able to navigate <laughs> all of these districts sure. so much easier. Um, but for the players specifically, it's a really fun way to kind of experience the verticality that's not related to amount. And it just takes, like like Ben has said with a lot of these things, you just pick up a charge, you can take it, and zip. Um, I think zip I used in a lot of the VO for the area in the garden, actually, too. Oh, to really? I did. Zip lines. I did. I think um, one of them time. is like, zip, you're at your next meeting. Zip, you get noodles for lunch. And I had a little <laughs> too much fun writing those. <laughs> okay, I love but that. Yeah. All right, so that's energy efficiency. And let's go to the last one where I've seen a whole lot of questions. Let's mm. talk about rescue protocol and how that works. Yeah, I saw a lot of comments about this one. Uh, yeah. As a, an Ellie main, this is going to be probably one of my favorite ones because I spent <laughs> way too much time in downstate. Uh, ben is main uh, uh, oh, the game. As it's rescue protocol, just let your jade bot. Uh, oh, it's number up. four. Uh, it's on a fairly lengthy cooldown, so you can't spam it. Oh, I see what they did. Uh, oh, yeah, so it's just uh, literally... And the skill is also uh, not available in uh, Basically, fractals yeah. and raids and strikes, PvP world versus world. But like that main four here where it's just a standard slow pop, 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 pop. pop. Yeah. And, but it just that replaces that skill. And the thing about that is you don't have to use this if this isn't this doesn't replace anything that already exists. This is an additional option that you have if you want to use that thing. Yeah, it does go over your normal bandage skill, but it's just a mm -hmm. probably a way more effective bandage skill, and you don't have to use it. It's, it doesn't work automatically. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right. If you two are ready, I want to move on to the part that I am super excited about, which is customization of your jade bots. That's something that we talked uh, about in the video, well, and that's something that I noticed a lot of you watching had yeah, called out, so I want to make sure that we give you all the details Ooh. of what my inventory full of goodies Ooh, is all icons. about here. Um, so I'm going to head, head over to this jade bot workbench, and let's get started. Um, <laughs> Even the workbench is cute! Our, oh, Jesus. I know. Uh, with our jade bot it. power core first, right, Ben? Yeah, uh, uh, so there's you gonna get three be so many inventory skins slots, for this. you get a power core uh, slot. Harbingers are gonna be unkillable. What we collectively call modules, the sensory arrays and <laughs> Necros ships. are gonna be so uh, strong in open the world. The power core is what fictionally allows your bot to function. It, it needs a power yeah. core to do almost anything that you'd want it to do. Makes sense. Uh, in, a, in addition to powering your modules and stuff like that, it also uh, gives the user a vitality boost. You can see uh, you have a tier 10, which is the max tier. It gives you a, a 235 uh, points of vitality. Um, we don't have any other stats that you can get right now. It is something that we're considering, uh, but uh, something we'll be taking a look at po probably later. Uh, and the so, next thing is... Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I think we're probably going to say the same thing, but let's find out. No, I was going to uh, <laughs> mention that so if you don't want to use your hey, jade bot talk. I want to tell for him. whatever reason, all you really need to do is unequip the power core. I'll be really sad about it, but uh, you can turn off yeah. pretty much every, all jade bot functions by removing the power core. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that is that is true. If you if you do not love the cute little friend and but you want to fill out your mastery track because completionist exists and I might be one of them. Um, you just don't have to equip the power core. I do want to touch on, um, you don't have to, you will get a power core. What and kind of monster would remove the power core and murder that adorable little right? thing? This is a stat Death increase, monster. so we didn't want to lock people no, out of that. So you, have to, you need to be level 80. You don't have to have End of Dragons. You're going to get the power core. And Ben, you can touch on that a little more. Yeah, uh, because, like you mentioned, this is, gives additional stats. We didn't want to gate it behind anything because uh, we didn't want, uh, we don't want to make the people feel like you had to buy the expansion to, to get that those extra stats. So uh, while you won't get one for free, if you don't have uh, Jade Bots unlocked and you don't have End of Dragons, they are tradable, so you can get them on the trading post. You do have to be level 80 to equip them. Uh, but yeah, that anybody level money 80 for jewelers. Power, whether they have Jade Bots or End of Dragons. Early. Once right, everyone's well, got them there, I don't know. Are they, are they used up over time? We'll start or? with Sensory Arrays, and that unlocks um, as soon as you get your Jade Bot, right? Yeah, uh, Century Arrays, you don't have to have a high tier power core to get or to unlock that slot. Uh, and you'll get your first Sensory Array uh, along with your Jade Bot and Power Core when you unlock it in the story. Okay, well, let's talk about what they are. I've got the Scavenger Protocols up first. Yeah, uh, so what the Scavenger Protocols do, um, you can basically command your bot to search enemies you kill for additional uh, loot. So like the one you had right there, leather, if you have this equipped, every once in a while your Jade bot will scan a corpse and find a little extra leather. We go there. Um, it's, go. On, it's somewhat rare. We didn't want people to be just able to gather you know, you know, tons of extra resources oh, yeah. by doing this, but I would, getting I a little bonus every once in a while that definitely is, a, is pretty cool, especially <laughs> if you're trying to craft something that requires a lot of a specific resource. Yeah, and there are six of those sensory arrays available with the scavenger protocol, so you can kind of customize that and get exactly the kind of thing There's that you're after. Them. All right, let's look at the next one, which wow. is okay. the recycler, hey. something that I saw a lot of questions about too. So I'll let you run with that, Ben. Yeah, for the uh, recyclers, basically any, if you have this equipped, your JBot mm -hmm. will be scanning for any really cheap junk items that you get, like the really low value stuff. And as you get it, it'll just transform it into whatever you're, you ask it to. So I should get a lottery ticket. In this ticket. case, you know, Bloodstone does, Dragon Eye. I think <laughs> on what most the people mark. probably end up using <laughs> is the, you can get it karma from it. My inventory might or, be semi-clean. Uh, for me, the most interesting thing <laughs> is the yeah, Jace Slivers. My inventory is yeah. always actually clean. actually a new currency that you can uh, <laughs> go to a vendor for and get <laughs> I definitely don't need this J-Bot module. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and this doesn't replace the things, this doesn't replace, it's kind of like the um, rescue protocol, it doesn't replace things you already have. This just ensures that the low value junk items turn into something that you specifically want and we're giving you that choice. Yeah, uh, the higher value junk items, uh, we didn't want to have it recycled mainly because well, for the most cases, you'd probably rather have the gold when it's really high yeah. value. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's meant to be the, just the really small junk items. Yeah, not like the ones you get right, from so gambling that's and shit. Those two, those, um, <laughs> that be let's see. I would like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Scavenger protocols, Ben, where all are those available? Because this is one of those exceptions we talked about. Yeah, um, those actually work in World vs. World. That's kind of the one exception. Ooh, World vs. World for content. Things to work in World vs. World. A lot of this other stuff doesn't. Like the power core stats are only available in uh, PvE. They're not available in World vs. World or, or PvP. Uh, but for the Scavenger and Recycler, there wasn't any reason why they shouldn't work in World vs. Nice. World. Uh, and the uh, uh, Strikes and Fractals and all that, so they definitely will work there. Awesome. All right, let's touch on these last couple, and then we will move on Damn. to the other half of this. Turtle! <laughs> so the first one in the sensory array, aside from that, is the Turtle Siege Enhancer. What? Yeah, so the Siege Enhancer, for anybody who likes to uh, be a gunner on the, seed, the turtle mounts, uh, if you equip one of these modules, you will get a damage boost to the, to the bombardment skill. Uh, like you'll notice, this is you have a tier three one here. Uh, mm -hmm. There's three tiers for for the non scavenger and the non uh, recycler modules. There's <laughs> always three tiers. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I've got the tier three. I am ready to make a mess, and I'm incredibly excited about it. 
also for your other mounts, you have the energy booster. Same same thing, the three tiers, right? Yeah, three tiers. Um, and this one, you'll get the tier one version of this uh, for free in the story. This is probably what I'll mostly default when I'm not looking for loot, because this basically just lets your mount regenerate energy faster. I like the array of customization. Um, do, do cool yeah. so, and I, I do want to know if these are okay. character bound <clears throat> or right, account so bound That choices. is the sensory arrays that we have available. We talked about point, like, whether or not ten tiers each character of has different when settings and customization you could do. Or it's just for everybody. But I guess it'd be that it'd be for everybody because it's through the mastery system, but the mastery, yeah, but this specifically looks like it could be character. Like assigning well, different true. things. Because like this is more equipment, right? It looks like yeah. so you could have different characters with different aims and goals, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Or maybe it is. Maybe it's an account bound one. It's like your family. Essentially, you know, like in, I guess, what is it? What uh, MMO is it? You have that family you name. You don't have this particular is it? surface chip. It's not Final Fantasy Fourteen, is it? Family name. No. Uh, BDO, yeah. Uh, it's a family name. Star Wars: The Old Republic. That's what I was thinking of. Right. Yeah. This is just an enhancement to the base one because the, the base one is, while it's fun, it's pretty, it, pretty limited in general. Okay. All right. Let's touch on these. It's other so three. different. The it's just it's, again. It's mounts. It's just like. So you probably all uh, saw the skip super, supercharger in yeah. the promotional video that we put out. Uh, it's a real fun one if you plan to be doing a lot of uh, boating around I love on the your way skiff. The skiff like hold, uh, pretty straightforward. The, the just increases holds the, the base while it's like boosting. Of your skiff. <laughs> I know. You can get going real quick if you have, <laughs> especially with a tier three, uh, going max speed, all your boat uh, masteries, and then use the turbo boost. You go fast enough that you can actually uh, beat yourself with the skiff, which is actually kind of a fun way to dismount. Right? Uh, I'm so glad you didn't say something else just then. Yeah. Yeah. Every just time we talk about right that, I laugh. <laughs> because all I can picture is a player character, like, beaching his skiff, throwing the keys to the valet, and, like, strutting away after leaving just yeah. destruction in their wake. Yeah, that's how, so, that's how I enter every single event. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see players actually making this happen, Ben, now that you have explained how this can be done. Let's make a mess. All right. Uh, next up is the Rescue Protocol Recharge. And, Ben, you mentioned the cooldown. This helps with that a little bit. Yeah, the, the base cooldown on Rescue Protocol is 10 minutes. I like to see it. Time off that. So I like to see a 10-minute cooldown. Uh, this is definitely one in combat I'll probably use because, like I said, I'm in I'm an Ellie and I end up in downstate quite often. So uh, <laughs> you can get down get it down to six minutes with the the tier three. All right, and finally the treasure hunter protocol. Uh, the treasure hunter protocol uh, basically has your Jade Boss scanning for treasure chests in the world and drawing their location on your map. Uh, the higher radi the higher tiers give a larger radius. Uh, very handy. <laughs> And to make it clear, it's not actually spawning the chest. It's telling you okay. where chests that already exist are. Uh, the one cool thing is this works on any chest in the game. So we did a pretty concerted effort to try to mark uh, every chest, even in uh, older parts of Tyria. So this should work there. Uh, it was a kind of a hand process. Thanks. If you do find a treasure chest <laughs> that doesn't uh, doesn't mark, let me know, and I'll, I'll get it added. Uh, yeah, it makes finding treasure a lot easier because... I, I'm not the type of person who really likes to do the, the search and find type thing. Mm -hmm. I just like somebody to tell me where it is and I'll just go get it. Uh, so this, this is pretty helpful when you want to find those chests. And you are the person who spent a lot of time looking for these chests, right? So I feel like you're done searching for chests for the, uh, until <laughs> yeah. the end of time. Yeah, yeah. I went through like, pretty much everything. Quick. Everything marked as a chest in the game, I, I basically altered uh, over the past few months. I hand stitched. That being said, sometimes we name things weird, so if it coding. wasn't named chest, I might have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know <laughs> if you find one that the Jade Bot did not find. All right, yeah. so that's your customization. Um, one more note on the modules these are all craftable and tradable, right? Yeah, uh, you basically, uh, the first tiers, I think they're all on this vendor, but the ones after mm -hmm. that uh, will require crafting research. And then the tier three ones actually require uh, both crafting research and for you to get a loot drop from the world. Uh, so there's specific monsters that will drop specific pieces uh, for the tier three versions of the recipes. All right. And then or for the to uh, three, upgrade. For three versions okay. of the modules, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I like how they are yeah, kind of encouraging so everybody to engage with all sorts of things, including the maps, and like they're tying the everything together, which I think is really nice, even with the batteries right. for the Jade Bot. And so yeah. there's our walkthrough of Jade Bots. There are a couple of other questions that I do want to touch on and make sure that you all get the answers to those that you wanted. Can I hide, if I don't want a sea of Jade Bots in front of me, can I hide other players' Jade Bots? Uh, you can't hide other people's Jade Bots. Uh, we purposely. One of the reasons why their jade bot isn't up all the round all the time is that we realized how messy it would make things look. So your jade bot pretty much only takes or only spawns in when it's taking a specific action, like you're having a gather power from a a, a battery or you're using a a, a zipline. Uh, the one thing like you can do is that you can, like we said, you can disable your own through removing the power core, but. Uh, the, the kind of interesting thing, one of the reasons why uh, the Jade bot isn't up all the time is we we're concerned about server performance of having another entity spawn. So we actually, and this might be revealing a little bit too much, but we actually fake most of the Jade bot animations with effects. It's not actual things spawning in the world uh, to make it a little bit easier on the server. The illusion, it's shattered. Okay. So we kind of <laughs> so invented it's... a new art pipeline. That works. Like, all right, so it's kind of a skill effect. Um... So while you can't hide other people's jade bots, we did keep in mind that they don't need to be out there in the world all the time, constantly. So yeah, if they're actively doing an action, or if like I'm doing right now, if they're in direct control mode, you can see them. Otherwise, it's not gonna be jade bot world as far as the eye can see. So. Jade bot and world, what if I wanted to be jade bot world? Earlier, if you the world would be a better place if we were all adorable jade bots. For, and it will not be a thing Very for true. You. Yep. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's dancing. <gasps> what? Ah. <laughs> Sorry, oh, that was completely inside the point, but we did a little dance. All right, and so I have cute. one more question. Since you need the Jade Bot workbenches to switch out your modules, where are those located? Um, currently, they're just in Cantha. Uh, that might change later on. I, Indigo can kind of talk about maybe the potential feature around that. Yeah, absolutely. So they're mostly in Cantha right now. And that's just because, I mean, Cantha has been closed off for the last 250 years. So Jade technology isn't going to be present in the rest of Tyria yet. But it's definitely a discussion that we're starting to explore and what the story looks like in a post End of Dragons world. I know I know that I'm really specifically excited to see what Char and Asurin technology do, not just with the Jade bots, but with the hollow projectors. And we're going to start to see kind of what happens as that technology becomes more widespread. So not yet. Guild Wars 2 Return to Tyria Expansion right. Cataclysm. And the incredibly important question Can I name my Jade Bot? Um, unfortunately, because the Jade Bots are mostly skill effects, and the, you know we can't name skill effects, right. well, we didn't put that feature in. But as I've told people, you can name it in your heart, decide what you want to call it, and that, that's what it is. Name oh, it in your explaining heart. Explaining that they're skill effects, but I thought I would touch on it anyway. I mean, people right. don't usually yeah. put a name so tag on their pet. I hope you all enjoyed your overview of the so, Jade Bots and True. Oh, I and name I name all my pets. <laughs> ben and Indigo, thank you both so much for spending time to walk us through That's all just of me, this. I guess. And thanks to all of you for hanging out with us today and watching and learning all about Jade Bots. You are 17 days away from your very own Jade Bots. End of Dragons is out on the 28th. Today is the 11th. We are oh, so close. So, so pre purchase soon. is available now. If you want to uh. hop over to the End of Dragons website, pre purchase the expansion, get ready for your Jade Bot, and scoop up some cool in game rewards now that you can use in the live game, including the title and the cape and the weapon chest. Thank you all for hanging out with us. Next week, we have our audio live stream with composer Drew McLean. Or, wow, Drew McLean. It's been a long day. <laughs> McLean Deemer and our audio <laughs> Drew <director>. McLean. <laughs> I hear him go laughing like, and yeah, then I'm done. <laughs> Drew's like, man, how long have you known me? <laughs> and our audio director, Drew Katie. They're going to be joining us to we talk about into one the audio here. side they of all Wars won. 2 End of Dragons. So come hang out with us next week. I will see you then, and thank you all. Bye. That was a nice little snippet. It was a nice little snippet. <laughs> Show the trailer again. Go on. Do it. Do it. They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if we do it. No, they're not going to do it. <laughs>
God damn it. Uh, Fine, anyway. All right then, <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we are going to do the podcast now. Uh, I don't know if our guests need to go and do anything specific. Grab a drink, go to the bathroom quickly. That's also fine. Uh, if you would like to have a quick couple of minutes, five minutes maybe, and come back, we'll start the podcast. Yeah, sound good? Sounds good. We may have been running around and stuff. So. Delicious. All right.